So in this video, I'd like to introduce the graphical version of labor market equilibrium with two industries when you're looking at the short run where labor can move between industries but capital is fixed. Now the, the standard measure of the marginal benefit for a firm of hiring an, uh, another worker is the price of the good multiplied times the number of units of the product that can be produced if you add one more worker. So price times the M MPL is the marginal benefit, the marginal revenue product in some, in some textbooks, the marginal revenue product of hiring one more worker. So that's the benefit from hiring the first worker, that's the benefit from hiring the second worker, the extra revenue you bring in, so on and so forth. So if you end up hiring LX1 workers, the benefit that the firm receives is the area under the demand curve. Now this is very similar to a uh, consumer benefit in a standard supply and demand where we're looking at the area under the demand curve is the benefit to the, uh, to, the, uh, to the consumers. This is just the benefit to the firm of hiring the worker. The total revenue that you can get by hiring this variable input of production. Let's imagine that that's the wage. Okay, the market wage that you gotta pay to every worker that comes to work in your, in your factory. So what we have here is an analogous concept to consumer surplus, but from the firm standpoint. So A and B, A and B is the total revenue to the firm. Okay, by hiring the workers. B is what you had to pay them, what economists call the wage bill. So B is how much you had to pay. That's the, the number of workers multiplied times the wage. So A is the payment to capital. Okay, if we assume we've got perfect competition and the capital earns everything that they don't pay to uh, um, workers, this is going to be the market return to capital. Okay, so that's, uh, this is going to be an important thing to keep in mind. So I want to uh, continue to have that over here. Now I want to bring in a second industry. This is industry Y. And here I've got the price of Y multiply times the marginal productivity of labor and Y. Same, exact same story. And they're going to pay the market wage and hire this many workers. So these are analogous, right? So you've got, oh, I don't know, let's call this C and, and, and D, where C is going to be the payments to capital, D is the, the wage bill, C plus D is the total, um, is the total revenue uh, to the firm, firm using capital and labor. Okay, so here, imagine these are the to only two industries. We've got this many workers that are employed in X, this many workers employed in industry Y. Now what I want to do is to combine these two graphs together so we can analyze them at the same time. And so imagine doing the following. I'm going to take this and I'm going to simply put it over on this graph. So I'm going to take this, just imagine it coming out of the board, coming over and depicted over here. So this is the wage in X. This is the wage in Y. So I've just taken it over here. And so I've got the payments or the price of X times the marginal productivity of labor in X given by this, this curve. 
Okay, so again, just taking it over here. And what that allows me to do is to analyze these two things together. Okay, so what we have is the horizontal axis is the total labor in the economy. And that is split. Let me erase some of this stuff so it's a little bit a little bit easier to see. Okay. So we've got these two demand curves for labor. Okay. Again, uh, done exactly as before. Let me do that up here. So that's the price of Y multiplied times the marginal product of the labor in Y. And now I'm going to identify these same areas that I uh, talked about uh, before. Okay, so let's look, so A is still, as before, that's the payments to capital. Okay, I actually should use a different letter here altogether. Okay, so um, the total payments, total revenue for Y when you hire this many workers in Y, the total revenue is the area under the demand curve. It is L E F. Okay, that whole area. The payments to labor, total payments when you're at this wage Y is EF. So L is the payments to labor, I'm sorry, to capital in industry Y when they pay that wage. The payments for X are done in a similar way. The total revenue in X is the area under the demand curve. Now we're measuring it from this axis over here, but it's the same idea. That is K G H. The payments to labor G and H. So K is the payments to capital in the X sector. So when we do the, uh, we're going to use this in a number of different uh, scenarios, but this is how you identify what happens in the two sectors, X and Y, payments to labor and payments to capital, all in one graph. Now, one of the main ways that we're going to be using this is, is imagining that the price of one of these goods goes up. But you're going to, you, should go, you should keep this in mind, and maybe this, this graph in particular in mind, as you do that analysis. So it's done the same way every time. Area under that labor demand curve is total revenue. Wage times the, the labor is how much you pay labor in total. What's left over is the payment to capital. Same way every time. Okay, hope that